Dan tells me that the "You're too near me to hear me" line was yours. Oh yeah, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. A buddy of mine, uh, uh, he'll, he, he's gonna be happy when he sees it. That's, that's one of his lines. You too near me to hear me. So I just threw that in. There's so many good lines, and it's just so true to to Roman's character. I know you worked hard on on spending time in the apartment. Mm. Uh, I mean, talk about that process for you, what you were going in and, and needing to do to make that happen. Why, you know, I asked a million whys. Why is he alone? Mm. Why does he have no relationships? Why does he eat peanut butter all the time? Why is he not comfortable around other people, you know? Why is he so brilliant, you know? And you start to head down a road to answer those questions. And, you know, I did a lot of research about Asperger's and, and you know, and, and who were his heroes? There was a picture that we always had up on the wall of uh, Bayard Rustin, who was really one of the architects of, of, of the civil rights movement and the, and, and, the, and the March on Washington in particular, and people don't know, mm. don't know it. So I just embraced it. You know, when a, when a writer writes a great play or screenplay, he doesn't give you all the clues of the character. It doesn't say in the script he has big hair and wears glasses and he's clumsy, and, but he gives you the, 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 the food you need to, to, to head off in a direction, and, and it's rare to, to get scripts like that. Carmen told me it was, it was tough having those dialogues with you because Roman looks away. There isn't that eye right, contact. Right, right, going back to Asperger's, and, and, and he tries to what they call mimic uh, neurotypical behavior. He, he's not able to read those signs and and he has difficulty looking at people at times and and uh, rather than to act that I asked the question why and, and head down that road there's never been a role that I've seen you take on where I, I, I wasn't fully convinced you dove every aspect into it but was there something extra special about this character I can tell you that there hasn't been a role that I've done when I look at the movie and I'm looking at it like I'm I'm talking to someone else, like, don't Roman, don't do that. I, I like the guy. I root for Roman because he's just like, man, he's trying. He just keeps, he just keeps messing up, like, no, don't do, no, don't do that, don't do that. I love that character. You know, I love, I'm not watching it anymore. I've seen it enough, but we, we, they showed a scene the other night and, 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 and uh, when he's trying to, to get a job and how emotionally he gets. And I was sitting there kind of welling up. It's yeah, like, man. yeah. It's, you know, you know he means he he. It's in every. You know, it's 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 in him. It's 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 just the core of who he is, and you you admire that. You wish, I wish I could be that have that much conviction. He's not distracted by all the other crap that we all get sucked no, into. No, no, and, and 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 but then he's unequipped. You know, I mean, he's you never see him. I don't think you. Well, until he starts to change a bit, you don't see him outside without his headphones. No. He stays in his world. He's in the safety of that iPod. Yeah, yes, that old iPod, iPod 2 or something. So great to meet you. My pleasure. Thanks brother. for your time. My pleasure.